We've learned about double integrals over rectangular regions where we integrated a function of two variables. So we had one integral for each independent variable. In this section, we're going to talk about triple integrals. And so we're going to integrate three times for a function of three variables, like f of x, y, z. We'll start by looking at a box, and then we're going to generalize that to um, not perfect box regions. Our definition for a triple integral is a natural extension of our double integral definition. So we add on an extra sum, and we add in an extra variable to our function, and of course we add on an extra delta in our um, calculation of these small little volumes. And if we can let our partition go infinitely tiny, so that we have infinitely many partitions, then that becomes an approximation that is exact, and our delta x, delta y, delta z gets replaced with dv. The big sim sigma summation notation gets replaced with our elongated sigma integration notation. For a visual of what a triple integral over a rectangular box looks like, I've got a box for you. And I've got a little mini partitioned cube inside of this box that we can kind of zoom in on. And we can see that the volume of that region is going to be delta x times delta y times delta z. So base times height, essentially, for not base times height, length times width times height for volume. Evaluating these integrals is pretty straightforward. We work our way in, sorry, we work our way out, starting from the inside. So first we'll integrate with respect to x because that's the innermost um, integral that we see on here. So integrating x plus y times z squared with respect to x, that would become x squared over 2 plus y z squared times x. And we'll evaluate that between x equals negative 1 and x equals 5. So we get 5 squared over 2 plus yz squared times 5 minus negative 1 squared over 2 plus yz squared times negative 1. And we'll simplify that. And we get 12 plus 6 times y times z squared. So we'll pull out that inside integral and replace it with that expression. And then we continue. Moving on next to the integral with respect to y, evaluating it between 2 and 4, replacing that, and then integrating with respect to z. So it's a natural extension of a double integral. We just add one more integration step. Now, when we start to look at general regions, this can feel a little more complicated. So our triple integral is over a three-dimensional region. And that three-dimensional region has a projection into one of the coordinate planes. The setup that I've drawn for you here the three-dimensional region is this cylinder with a green top and a blue bottom, and it has a shadow in the xy plane. We call that shadow D. Um, it doesn't need to be D per se, but it's a two-dimensional shadow, not 3D. And then we can see that it's a projection from the solid E down into the xy plane. And we're going to define the top of the solid E by the function u1 and the bottom by the function u2. Oh, I have those backwards. This should be u2 on top, and this should be u1 on bottom. So that when we set up our triple integral, it's just like how we did our double integral over a 2D region. But then when we set up the third integral, we're integrating between these z values. So if we look at our definition here, 
this is the new part that we're sticking inside of our old double integral. So we used to integrate over two independent variables, over some area partition, but now inside of that, instead of just having a single function, we are adding in a third integral with respect to z in this case, and the bounds for the z values are between two potential functions, u1 and u2. It is important to note that the shape of your projection, this shadow d, we need to pay attention to it because it could be better to run that as a type 1 with vertical cuts or a type 2 with horizontal cuts. So we'll take a look at a couple of examples and I'll show you what I mean. In this case, we're going to evaluate a triple integral over a general bounded region. So it's like a tetrahedron that you see here in blue. The tetrahedron is bounded by planes, the x equals zero plane, in other words, the zy coordinate plane, the y equals zero plane, in other words, the xz coordinate plane, and then the plane x plus y plus z equals one, which is what you see here in blue. We want to integrate over this three-dimensional region, and we're integrating the function of three independent variables, f of x, y, z equals 5x minus 3y. We'll start by defining our region E, the set of x, y, z that our, our integral is going to span over. Now we see that we're bound by x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero. So nothing below the x, y plane, nothing behind the x, z plane, and nothing behind the y, z plane either. So we know that x, y, and z all have a minimum value of zero. And then we have to think about the maximum value that we can go from there. Now, because we have a plane that carves out the top of our three-dimensional region, I'm going to solve that for z so that I can use this to define the top of the region E. So z's largest value would be at that plane, which is 1 minus x minus y. Now that plane carves out the top of this surface, so think of it as drawing a bunch of vertical arrows that touch the top of this plane, and we're going to draw those all over the place. We can start drawing them when x is equal to 0, and we can draw them all the way up until x equals 1, so we know that x can be as large as 1, and same for y. And if that's not immediately clear, there's another thing we can do to try and clear that up. Um, once we've decided that there is a top to this E, then we can create the projection in the xy plane. So as soon as we decide that we're going to solve that plane for z, we're going to create a projection in the xy plane. And it's basically, imagine if you were to smash this three-dimensional object into the xy plane, you would trace out a triangle that hits the x-axis at x equals 1, hits the y-axis at y equals 1. And so looking at this, we would need to decide, is d going to be a type 1 or type 2? And let's go ahead and just call it a type 1. You can make it whichever you'd like, but I'm going to choose to make it type 1, meaning I'm going to draw vertical strips this way. So my y values are going to, ooh, I said y was going to go all the way up to 1. That's not true. y is allowed to go from 0 all the way up to the equation that carves out this space in the xy plane. Now, we can see that the x-intercept is 1, the y-intercept is 1, so we can create an equation with that. I can tell that the slope is going to, say, go um, over 1 and down 1, so we have a slope of negative 1. 
and we have a y-intercept of positive 1. So the equation of that line looks like y equals negative x plus 1, which means the largest value of I, y is when we're on that line. So the max value for y would be negative x plus 1. And we're drawing those vertical lines in that region starting at x equals 0 and going all the way up to x equals 1. So the upper value for x will be 1. Now we have the region E defined clearly so we can set up our triple integral. Let's start with the inside first. So the innermost integral will have the function that we're integrating over. So this f of x, y, z, we'll plug that to the inside first, 5x minus 3y, and we're integrating that with respect to z. And z has a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of 1 minus x minus y. And then next, we've decided to turn the projection into a type 1, a vertical region. So we're going to, that determines our order of integration. We need to integrate with respect to y first. So then I'll put my y integral symbol and say y gets to go from 0 all the way up to negative x plus 1. And then that leaves x for last, when we can add on our x integral, x gets to go from 0 up to 1. So setting up these triple integrals over general bounded regions, first you decide which variable you'll integrate first. You'll almost always do z first because it's an easier problem to create, uh, but there are plenty of real applications where you would not do z first, but for the sake of practice, and in this class, we'll usually do z first. So you define the top of your three-dimensional region by some equation z, and then from there you draw your projection into the xy plane, decide if that is going to be a type 1 or a type 2. You're basically just treating that like a double integral over um, a region in the xy plane. Set up your triple integral, and then integrate as usual.